test, test. I know it. I know we have a couple minutes, but on your way up, if you can grab a book that's over here on the side whenever you come up. Thank you. If you're in the choir, come on up this morning. Brother Brian needs to get with everybody, so get on up if you're in the choir.
morning. Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. Let's all stand. If you need a hymn book, it's page 234, but we're going to sing, I Know Whom I Have Believed. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth verse. The words will be on the screen for you. Let's all sing out on that first verse now. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me had made known. of God this morning. If you are needing a chair or something, uh, so Brother Corey, if y'all need something, we'll get Brother Mike, grab a few here, but uh, we put out, we thought enough, but uh, we'd have to get all of you close together, so anyway, but anyway, good to see in the house of God this morning, appreciate the beautiful now weather we got today, it's getting chillier all through the day, but um, in North Carolina, 74 one day, 44, 34 the next, but hallelujah, it's uh Pretty day today, Amen. And uh, I'm going to be going over a few things here with you in a morning, uh, in a few moments. Today is a huge transition day, and I'll say more about that here in just a few moments. And uh, we'll uh, get to working on that. If you are uh, wondering if we're going to be having service tonight, the answer is yes. Uh, I will do what I can to do that. Brother Brian not going to be here most of the day today, probably uh, working. And uh, but I'll do most of you understand that one in just a moment. Uh, but uh, we are going to be having service tonight. And um, you notice the spiders over you, whoever's sitting under that opening over there. If you're hot or cold, you're going to be blessed, amen. But uh, anyway, a uh, lot of work went on yesterday, everything had to be moved to get all this done. And I appreciate the uh, folks that came over and helped me out with that. And um, a lot of you did not get a text about that because a lot of you we didn't want doing it. And uh, I kind of wanted more of the younger people, younger men to help with that. But a lot of them were tied up and busy as well. But uh, we got it done, and I appreciate that. And um, thank the Lord for progress. Amen. And so we're going to go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Pray Brother James, Miss Kristen. I uh, thank uh, Brother Ryan. It's clear that they are uh, be gone this Sunday, next Sunday. Pray for them for safety as they're gone. And uh, also... Uh, if you would today, I have a, a couple of special prayer requests. One of them is for Brother Barry Halter Sr. I was talking to Brother Barry this morning. This stuff has really knocked him down. And uh, Brother Barry, and I was talking this morning, I think if I'm right, Brother Barry, Miss Casey said that 30% of his heart is actually working right. Um, don't know really what the reason for that is. They've got to check. But um, he's had this real bad flu stuff and I don't know what all it went into. He's at home, but he's not even feeling well today again. So just remember him in prayer. But we miss Brother Barry. I want to see him get back. And uh, so we miss miss them. It's good to have Brother Paul, Miss Sheila, and Faith back. I, I thought uh, Miss Faith would be a teenager now, but she... But I was picking with Brother Paul. I told Brother Paul I was going to have to wrap him in plastic bubble wrap to keep him safe. 
But uh, Sheila, it's good to have y'all back. I'm glad that she, Miss Sheila had a big bout with uh, sickness a while back, so I'm glad they are better. And Brother Paul, we can't do without him because he's overseeing everything around here, so he don't have no choice but to get better. Amen. And uh, so he's doing that. And uh, so it is good. Uh, at least we got a report on Brother Barry. Miss Pansy Ballard, good to have you back today. She's doing it. We got her up on the second row where she can shout good right on the second row. So it's good to have her back today. I want you to remember one of my dearest friends today. He's a man that is extremely close to me, Pastor Douglas Duncan. He is down in Isla, Georgia. Uh, Brother Duncan and I have been friends for many years. He um, had a stint put in his heart several years ago, well, 2021. Well, there's about a 90% blockage again in that stint. But then they found some other places, and in the morning, he's going through triple bypass surgery in Georgia in the morning. They feel like everything will go well with that. You know, open heart's a little different than it used to be, and sometimes they got people home two days. But anyway, uh, remember Douglas Duncan. Would you remember him? He's one of the dearest friends I have. I, I love him, and uh, pastors at uh, Mount Zion Baptist Church in Isla, Georgia. So if you could pray for him and just ask the Lord uh, to touch him today, all right? So I know there are a lot of needs, a lot of requests today, and uh, we'll remember everybody and pray for them. But let's go ahead and get service started in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, what a joy it is. What a privilege it is to be able to come to the house of God this morning, see such a great crowd, knowing, God, we have two different super church children's schools going on right now and, and services and God, we just thank you, Lord, for the people you're helping us to reach. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord. I've seen several new families today. Lord, we are so thankful when folks visit with us here at Calvary. Lord, I, I pray you'll make their day a good, special day. And, Lord, they'll leave here knowing they were our honored guest. Lord, I pray today, God, that you would be with Brother Barry today. Lord, many have been praying for him. So, Lord, as a church today, we agree together that, God, you would touch Brother Barry's body. Lord, there's no place he'd rather be than church. And Lord, I pray that you touch Brother Barry. I pray, God, that you would continue, uh, Lord, to touch Miss Pansy and give her strength. Miss Sheila and Brother Paul, you continue to give them strength. Lord, then I pray, God, for Brother Douglas today. Lord, I pray that surgery go well in the morning. Be with Julie and Jamie and uh, the, the son-in-laws and all them as they try to help take care of him since Miss Pat's going home to glory. I just pray that you be with him. Give the doctors wisdom in the morning. Touch them. Lord, thank you for what you're doing around here, all the projects going on. I pray, God, that you'll bless and touch uh, those. Lord, I pray today for Brother James. Lord, I'm so thankful for the hard work he does around here to help us keep things right. Lord, let him have a good rest, Lord, so we can get him real busy when he gets back. Lord, I do pray, God, that you would be with Brother Brian. Thank you for him, Lord. Pray for Brother Crabtree. You strengthen him. Lord, I just pray you give us a good day in the Lord today. And Lord, most of all, if there's somebody in our midst and they have never trusted Jesus as Lord and Savior, God, I pray that today they would give their life to you. Lord, not a greater decision than to be saved. Now bless Brother Brian as he comes back to lead us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You use your hymn book, it's page 230. We'll sing Grace Greater Than Our Sin. We'll sing the first and last. Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Let's all join on the first verse now. Marvelous grace of our love.
this morning. Pray God will use them. Welcome all of our visitors today. We're glad to have them.
Amen. Good to see in the house of the Lord this morning. Exciting times at Calvary Baptist Church, and I have a lot to make mention of this morning. First of all, I want to mention this. The flower in front of the pulpit is in memory of Miss Amelia Tucker's brother-in-law who passed away. Uh, he got really found out about cancer, Miss Amelia. It was quick. Well, it wasn't long at all. And uh, he passed away. And so I want to thank Miss Amelia for the beautiful flower in the church today. And I want to thank uh, Miss Mary uh, White for uh, Irma Johnny for doing me this license plate. Check that out. God can do more in 2024. I sold my truck and bought me an old broken down Jeep. And I'm going to stick this on the front of my Jeep. God can do more. Why? Because, praise God, it's got to get me to where I'm going when I go. <laughs> so he can do more, all right? But anyway, uh, I got to do something yesterday. It was awesome. I got to go watch kindergarten through second grade basketball game. There's one thing about that game. There ain't a lot of dribbling. <laughs> At least not consistently. Amen. You talking about if anybody ever just wants to be cheered up on a Saturday, Go watch kindergarten through second grade play basketball. It is just, we went over yesterday, saw several of our families got kids involved, and we, they'd asked us to come. We were able to slip out and go. That was so fun. I told Wendy, I'm never going back to another high school game. I don't know, but I tell you, it was, it was pretty neat. And uh, this one little girl, I got to tell you all this, she was on another team than, than, than uh, Southview's little ones. But she, what, we remember her name, her name was, Parker, because she was hollered a lot by her coach. Parker would get the ball. She wouldn't pass it. She wouldn't shoot it. The coach would say, throw it in. She'd go, <laughs> amen. She just keep it. And <laughs> we got, we just died laughing. You, you just had to. It, I'm telling you, if you ever just need a little encouragement, want to get a good laugh. You know, sort of like Bill Clark playing basketball. You get a good laugh <laughs> at that. But uh, anyway, I <laughs> uh, do remember that. All right, now. Are y'all ready for 1,250 announcements? Have a seat. All right. I have got things I got to mention to you. This morning, everybody look up at me now. This morning is the last service in here probably from four to six weeks. All right. Preferably four. Now, we're going to be moved to the other building. We know Brother Brian already, we have put our numbers together. We know what we can do. It is going to be inconvenient for some of you because if you're in the choir, you may have to stay in the choir loft, especially crowds like this. We can't get them in that building. You have to stay in the choir loft, all right? So you have to take your Bible and stuff and stay in the choir loft if you sing in the choir, if we need you to, all right? We're going to get every single every single brother, look, brother Corey said last week I got my new watch. It ain't me this week. Every, whose phone is, is that hers, is that her, Miss Brenda, is that your phone? <laughs> Miss Robin, would you go buy her a flip phone? Matter of fact, would you go get her a string and two cups? <laughs> All right. Real quick, let me mention that we have fun, Miss Brenda. She's, you know, when you, you, there's a generation, cell phones are a new thing, amen? But anyway, let me mention real quick, today we're emptying every red chair out of this building to the other building. Not only that, but everything in the other building has got to be out. I'm not going to put you on, on plastic white chairs and fold up chairs for four to six weeks. We're going to, so, listen to me a moment. This is the last service in here for four to six weeks, all right? The choir loft's got to come down today, all right? All the chairs, they, uh, all the things on the walls have got to come down under Brother Brian's direction. Those things are really expensive, so they've all got to come down, all right? We've got to go and set up church. I've tried 12 times to cancel tonight. I can't do it. I'm just one of these preachers. I just want to have church. So we're going to have church, all right? We'll get it the best we can, but we're going to have church. So we will have service tonight at 6. Now, here's what I want you to do after service. Everybody listen to me, okay? There are some books in these seats. If you have one in your seat, 
I do not want you to tote it or carry it anywhere. I want you to go just lay it on the banister of the sound room over here. If you have, that's after church, by the way, not during preaching. But if you have one, okay. Now, listen to me here. If you are physically able to carry one chair when service ends, I've moved these chairs two times in the last two days. One of them is six something in the morning. All right? So if you can carry a chair, I don't want you to set it up. We don't want you to set up the building. Brother Brian and I are going to handle that. We're going to go out of here with a chair. We're going to go up to a building. We're just going to set them in there. All right? Spanish church, are they moving stuff out? Do you know, Miss Robin? All right? So we've got to move all the tables, all the chairs, everything out of that room. All them white petitions out of that room. It's got to be church for the next four to six weeks in our old auditorium. At least, hopefully it won't be that long. Okay? Everything down here is still going to operate. We're going to use nursery here. We're going to use all the classrooms, Sunday school here. Uh, the other nursery we want to use, we got to roll stuff in it. We just we don't have the room to put stuff out of the way. So it's going to be a little inconvenient for a little while, okay? It's just going to be part of it. And so, but it's a good thing because we're progressing, all right? Now, let me mention, we're going to do that after. If you are an older person, here's what I want you to do. I want you to find a young person and say, you take two chairs so I don't have to take one. All right? So if you're an older person, you find a young person, so you take two chairs and I won't have to take one. All right? And so that way, uh, we'll, we'll move as many as we can and then we'll get the rest of them. Um, Brother Brian, run across here real quick. Pull out that thing over there and I'm, I'm going to show everybody our new handy dandy chair roller. Made by Mr. Farron Stink. He bought a regular one in a little truck. And he made this gadget on the end of it. Rolled it out. Just like if you were, let's make a deal. You're the model. That's a long way to go. Look, see. Look at that. Brother Farron made. So, we can roll stacks of chairs as they're leaned back. But if you put too many on that stack, one of them could fall on your head. So let us take care of that. Thank you, Brother Brown, for that great demonstration. All right. Thank you, Brother Farron. I think you bought another one. Where's he at? I think you bought another one of those two. Right? We have two of them. So anyway, um, here's what's going to be going on. As you notice, Heaton and I have been going in for two, for two or three days. They're not done, of course. So they got a little more to do. We have all the lights are coming down Friday. We have 100 lights that's got to go up. Those are can lights that are go. All right. But right now, they're all coming down. So they got to lay them on the ground, shout them up in there so they can see what they're doing uh, so we don't have to rent a bunch of lights, all right? So they've got to do that. Monday, this wall and this wall are going to be sheetrock to match everything else. Right now, this is uh, plyboard, not sheetrock. It's got to all match. They're also going to frame around the beam so there'll be no, there'll be no beam showing. No beam's going to show at all, all right? Monday, they'll start that. Should get, they, I don't know, Brother Paul, we're thinking several days, right? Three, four, five days. After that, Friday, the electrician's coming in to drop everything down to wire up for the lighting system, all right? Then after that, um, the next step will be the following Monday. The following Monday, we're putting the grid in for the drop ceilings. So that'll come in, be underneath all the beams. You'll probably, well, you don't even have to be down here, but it'll be grid Underneath that, we're not going to put all the panels in because we've got to put lights in. But they're going to do the side borders and the grid. That'll go the next week, all right? Wednesday, all the hardwood that we're waiting on, that we had a special order for steps, are coming in. All the steps will be uh, put in. Doors are going to be hung. The doors, we've got a lot of doors in here. The baptistry tree is actually here. Uh, we got it back there. It's 450 pounds. It took... Four strong young men. That's why a couple of them are on vacation now. Four strong young men to get that up there. Now, there is one major issue with the baptistry. Once it's in place, it leaves room enough for me and about this far to stand behind it because it is a sit-down baptistry. You walk in, sit down, I'll just lean you from the outside so I don't have to get in it and that way I can be right back in church. You can put your feet in steps and you'll sit and fall. But if I gain a lot of weight, Brother Dermot's got to do all the baptizing. 
All right? Because I don't have so much room behind that thing. All right? So, anyway, you got to be skinny preacher baptizing. But anyway, I hope that ain't a problem. Because if I go this far, we're going to need to get some cholesterol medicine. All right? So, anyway, uh, that's going to be done. All the sanding, uh, finishing, painting. It's not going to be pleasant to be in here for four to five, six weeks, hopefully two. But anyway, uh, we want to get in here before Jubilee, all right? That's the goal. Will you work with me? Will you, will, I told the 50-year-old and above class, I said, I'm one of you. We are easy to complain. And I feel like we've lived long enough, we have that right. But we're not going to this time. You hear me? We've been putting a lot of work in over here, understand? So we're going to be, it's going to be inconvenient. Mama's got to walk to another building. Security's going to be all around them, take care of them, okay? It's going to be tough. We have a Valentine banquet coming up. We have nowhere to have it. So here's what we're going to do. Miss Robin's checking tomorrow. We may have a building. We can decorate, have our banquet in. We will let you know that by Wednesday night. Okay, if we can't get the building, we're going to move it. Your sweetheart will hopefully will still be your sweetheart in April. All right, but I think we're going to be able to do it. All right, if we can get that building. So anyway, remember that. So I would prefer you not let your children come down here and run around in the auditorium. All right, so if you have to come down to these buildings, it's going to be a little dangerous for them. Lights on the floor, everything. Kind of keep them in the other part of it. Hopefully we'll get this done. The ground dries up out there. They're going to start moving dirt when we survive a plan on how we're going to park people because we're going to have to park you down both sides of the road, around the back. Half of this parking lot almost, a quarter of it's coming out to get what they wanted done. So that's going to be another inconvenience. But when it's all said and done, all this remodeled, all this going, new gym, mezzanine, new parking, new breezeways, and Lord willing, all of it paid for. Lord willing. Lord willing. Things cost more than you think they're going to cost. But last Sunday, we had a special gift from a family. A $10,000 was given last Sunday. That, as that keeps happening, um, we are still paying for everything you see in here out of our general account. I, I don't normally take Sunday mornings with announcements. But this is exciting, but I need your help. After church, if you can take a chair, if you can't, don't feel bad about it, but if you can. But if you see somebody you think could take two, and then Brother Farron will have his handy-dandy roller, right? Brother Farron, I think you should be the first one to roll a stack of chairs, all right? And so don't let Brother Kenny Crest do it because he's so little. We're going to push him back down the hill, all right? But uh, anyway, uh, hopefully uh, we also are praying about putting a camera system in so we can watch every corner of the building all of our kids and stuff, and we'll have monitors where we can watch that. That'll be something we got to look at costs. But in our day and time, we, you need that kind of security. So help us pray that we've got a supply where we can do all this stuff, all right? Miss Libby and Miss Robin and Miss Victoria are going to try to work with me on, uh, you know, getting the banquet everything done. And uh, Lord willing, we'll get it all. Amen, brother? All right? You ready to spend the day with me today? I don't hear about no four babies. All right, okay. Victoria, just leave them at the house. Going to need you too. All right, but anyway, uh, we'll try to get it all accomplished. We're going to try to get it set up today. We are going to have church regardless of what we're doing. I, I just want to have church, all right? And so we're going to do it. Now, let's all stand together. Everybody stand, if you can. <laughs> Brother Greg, take a deep breath. <sighs> have a seat. We're now going back to church, all right? I just need to get all that out to you, okay? All right, let's enjoy some good singing. Order your license plate today, twenty nine ninety five. No, I'm kidding, but order your license plate. All right.
he's gone. All right, I did need to mention this. Brother Farron, how, do you need any men helping you Saturday? You probably need a few helping you. Brother Farron's got to take down all the TV screens and all the speakers down, all the, some of the lighting that up here. We may have to do some that, but not the regular lights. So, Brother Farron, you see him. If you might can help him, they're going to be using that little truck thing back there that rides around a lift and get that done. So, uh, just something else I thought about. All right? All right, let's stand together this morning. All right, Brother Brady, I get it, buddy? Okay. Um, I appreciate Brother Brady filling in and helping us out today. He wasn't in the choir, so he could help Brother Bobby's under the weather, so he wanted the teenagers, and they wore him out, I think. But uh, I know you guys. Appreciate all of y'all over there helping out. And uh, I want to preach this morning, uh, as I've been preaching, uh, we went through all the stories we call parables in the Word of God. Well, I've been going to statements in the Bible and uh, sayings in the Bible that are considered parables, actually. They're just not what we would know as a typical parable of a story, but I do believe they are. And I want you to turn with us one verse of Scripture this morning, and that is chapter 9 and verse number 12 of uh, the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 9 and verse number 12. And uh, if you would turn there today, Matthew 9 and verse number 12. Amen. I love hearing Bibles turn in church. I always have. Matthew 9, verse number 12. The Bible says, but when Jesus heard that, what did he hear? Look back up. Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? How many of you glad Jesus loves sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Today, with the help of the Lord, I want to preach on a thought God gave me from this verse. And I'll be honest with you, I'm so what excited about it. it. It may not go well. If it don't, that'll be all right uh, with you, but it won't be all right with me because I've been excited about it. But I want to preach for a few moments this morning on the subject of going to see a specialist. Going to see a specialist. The Bible says they that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. And uh, I want you to look at that verse, think about that verse, and we'll deal with it here in just a moment. Father, may you bless the word of God today. Use it. Lord, thank you for this wonderful numbers out on a Sunday morning for all of those that are serving around this property right now. Lord, we give you the glory and give you the praise for what you're going to do in advance. Lord, we believe the walls already can come down even before. Uh, Lord, we stop marching. God, we got to do shout and pray. And we know, God, you can do the rest. Lord, I pray you'll give us a good time in the Lord today. We ask it all in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Let me give you the definition of a couple of things here as I get into the message today. First of all, you know where the Bible says, they that be whole need not a physician. Now you'll find these verses in the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And you'll find it in a different way. Matter of fact, one of the words that's used here in Matthew and Mark is not used uh, in uh, Luke because Luke was a physician and God used those men and their personalities as he gave them the word of God but yet it still carries the same idea and of course John's uh, book is a little different outside of those synoptic gospels I want you to understand something with me real quick the word whole here in chapter number 9 means to be strong to have power or strength to overcome so when you see the word whole here how can we be made whole what does it mean to be made whole it simply means this it means to have power and strength to overcome. How many of you glad there's somebody that can give us power and strength to overcome things in our life? Uh, the greatest things in our life. Matter of fact, you'll find the word sick here really doesn't deal uh, with just the idea of sickness, though the analogy is there in the parable, but sick deals with sin. In other words, Jesus is saying uh, these public and sinners are lost in sin. 
they're going to die without Christ. And nobody else can make them whole. But I'm glad I serve a Savior this morning. I'm glad there is somebody today that can make them whole. Amen. Now, why am I using the word specialist? Well, understand today that a physician that can do great things above other physicians uh, would be known as a specialist. Let me give you what a specialist is today. A person highly skilled in a specific field. Someone's a specialist that's highly skilled in what they're doing. Now, the older I get, I find out that I'm sent, y'all help me now, to more specialists. Amen. Matter of fact, most of us have been there a time or two when we visit our family doctor or you go to the mercy room, here's what they'll say. We're going to send you uh, to a specialist. That's somebody that has the ability to do beyond what others can do. Well, guess what? I'm glad when Jesus looked uh, at those scribes and Pharisees, he said to them, uh, he's a specialist. Amen. He simply said this. Not they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. He's looking to that crowd and realizing that they are sick in sin. But you know what I'm glad of today? I'm glad, thank God, that one day I was sick in sin, lost in sin. I didn't have hope. And I'm glad I went to the great physician of heaven. And I'm glad he had the right medicine. And that medicine was the blood of Christ. And he washed me in the blood and changed my life can I get a witness today amen we could just stop right there and shout a while that's exactly right why I'll tell you why because Jesus specializes in healing sinners Jesus specializes in taking care of the lost. He is a physician. He is the great physician. Oh, I'm glad he can still heal our body. I'm glad he can touch our body. I'm glad he can do that. But listen, there are times that he does not heal. Uh, for some reason, we go through things. and Sometimes it's to get us to heaven. Well, the Bible uh, says that Jesus, uh, there's rejoicing in heaven uh, over even the children of God down here when the Lord gets those jewels and brings them home in the book of Micah. But I want you to understand this. He does not, he does not heal everybody, but he can. I have seen people that he has touched. I know that he has touched them. But I want you to listen to this. There is not one sinner. There is not one sinner that's broken, that comes to the great position, that he does not heal, that he does not change, that he does not help. How many of you glad today that this is a whosoever will gospel and everyone can come to Christ and be saved by the grace of God. Oh, yes. Here's what the Bible says that Jesus said in Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me, Jesus talking, he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty that them that are bruised. Hey, I want you to understand this today. That's why he came. He came to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. He came to save. He came to change lives. He came to make us new. So understand in the word of God today that Jesus is our great our great physician today according to the Bible. Amen. Now watch this. Sin is compared to sickness. I said that earlier. But I want to say just a little more. Now I don't want you to get quiet here because I'm still preaching the same way today that I preached 30 years ago. And I have not changed what I'm getting ready to say. So sin is compared to sickness. Are you ready? I think a lot of this mess in our world today is nothing more than sickness, to be honest. And it's called sin. I think a lot of the mess we see in our country, a lot of the way people live and the way people do, it is a sickness of demonic or, 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 or whatever the word is coming from. Anyway, in, in origin, it is, a, it is without a doubt a sickness in our country today. 
say. You can call it a choice. You can call it a lifestyle. You can call it what you want to call it. God calls it sin. And sin is a sickness that needs to be taken care of. Amen. So sin is compared to a sickness. Second of all, the sickness brings discomfort. When you're sick, talking about this sin, this sickness, it brings discomfort. I'm going to tell you this. I love when people visit Calvary. I, I met some wonderful couples today. One of them moved in the area and others that are visiting with us today. And I'm thankful. And I want to say what an honor it is to have you with us today. And I hope uh, that you'll see something here that may want to bring you back. But I will not apologize for old time religion. I will not apologize for a King James Bible. I will not apologize for the kind of music you heard today. I will not apologize for preaching it straight down the line. Right is right and wrong is wrong and we need to preach the word of God as strong today as we ever have but I will tell you this today sickness brings discomfort I'm going to say this it sounds a little weird for a preacher to say but I want lost people to feel a little uncomfortable when they come to church here amen I don't say I don't want them to come. I love them. I want them to be here. And I want them to have a seat. And I want them to come on whichever way they are. But I don't want them to leave on which way they are. Amen. I don't, not good English, but it'll preach. I want you to understand, I want them to come. But listen, when I was lost, I didn't feel comfortable in church. I squirmed around in the seat. Couldn't wait to get out. And didn't want to go. Why? Because I was lost without God. Dying and on my way to hell. But guess what? I've tried 12 times to get this stuff moved today and rest tonight. But guess what? I can't do it. Why? Because when I got saved by the grace of God, God put a love of church inside of me. And I love being with this crowd. I love being in the house of God. Why? Because, praise God, I got cured from sickness. Amen. It's preaching all right, ain't it? Amen. Listen, sin is compared to sickness. Sickness brings discomfort. But there's another thing. Sickness is costly. Praise God, it costs something to get sick. Amen. I, I'm telling you, you go to the doctor today, ain't going to be no twenty nine ninety five. It's going to be more than the oil change. Say amen right there. It costs something to get sick. Or if you get oil change for that price, let me know. It costs something to get sick. It does. And you know what? If you die without Christ or you live in sin, it'll cost you something. That sin will cost you something. But it don't have to be that way. What if I walked into the cancer ward at Duke University Hospital and I said to rows and rows of patients, I have the cure. Everybody open your door. I'm going to walk by your room and give you this and you're not going to have cancer anymore. Honey, they'd be standing at the line. I, I'd be family weeping. Uh, there'd be people crying. Thank God we got a remedy. Well guess what? I don't have that remedy but I do have one today and that is if you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ you'll never be the same and he can change your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Now listen. The Bible says in chapter 10 of verse, verse 10 of chapter 9 it came to pass as Jesus said at me in the house, behold, many public sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. That's where this entire statement parable originates from. Now listen, Matthew wanted, I like this. Lord have mercy. I was, I was studying this, and as you look at this verse and you look at it in context, and I believe you ought to preach all the Bible in context, but as you look at it, I want you to see it. I have to turn my Bible to get to it. But I want you to see it. The Bible says, now look back, look back. The Bible says that the Pharisees showed up, but notice where they're at. Look at verse 9 again. And Jesus passed forth from thence. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, Follow me. And he arose. And uh, the Bible tells us now, and follow him. I understand. Some people say, well, that could have been his call to serve. It also could have been his call to salvation. Because the Lord come by and spoke to him. And I sort of believe that. But I want you to watch what old Matthew does as soon as the Lord touches his life. 
Bible says Matthew, Matthew is going to have a meal at his house. He said, Jesus passed from thence, saw a man named Matthew. Matthew said, Receive the custom, said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And he came to pass, and Jesus said, It meet in the house. Whose house? Matthew's house. Watch. Behold, many probably said, You know what happened? They invited, they invited the people that used to be like Matthew. You get to their way home, just do this. Whoop. Amen. They invited the people that at one time were like Matthew. Hey, can I tell you what salvation will do to your life? Can I tell you what a call of God will do to your life? It will make you look at everybody and see them in their lost condition and remember where you were. Somebody help me. And remember in your life what God did for you and he changed your life. Amen. Praise God. That's good preaching even if I'm doing it. It is. Amen. But of course, you always got scribes and Pharisees. They're fault finders. They are. Here's what Dr. Spurgeon said in one of his books. I mean, if you've read a little bit of Dr. Spurgeon, a physician shouldn't, should be found where the work is for him to do. A physician should be found where the work is. You know why? That's why I don't, have no, I don't give you two cents with all this television popping people on the head and blowing on them. They're falling over and healed. I'll give you two simple. It's all, can you hear me? It's all show. I've said this since I was a young preacher. If I had that kind of ability, it wouldn't be in my $10 million auditorium flying in my private jet. It would be at the hospital at Levine Children Hospital. It would be somewhere where mom and daddies are about to lose their youngins and I'd walk in there and if I had that ability, I'd pray and touch him youngins and I'd blow in whatever else I had to do if God could raise them out of cancer. But friend, you've got to understand, it is not that way. In order for us to understand that, we have to understand if a physician has the ability, then do something to help people. Amen? Oh, yes. Now, that's the introduction. I've got eight minutes. And I'm going to finish this morning because I ain't going to preach it tonight. It's got to be preached together. Number one, the cost of the specialist. Have you ever noticed it costs more when you go to a specialist? God gave me this. When God gave me this, I thought, man, it's pretty good. Watch this. And I'm talking about God. I'm talking, God gave me this. Y'all get it? God gave me this. Y'all understand it, right? Y'all know me. So it's got to be from God, right? The cost of the specialist. Watch this. Brother Dermont, if you run over here to the doctor or to the urgent care, they may say, okay, uh, you know, that'll be your copay or whatever, right? Because the way we do our insurance will differ. But you go to that specialist, you got to sign like 14 papers. Your house away, your car. Y'all, I mean, I mean, you go to specials, it costs, right? It costs. Well, guess what? Who do I tell you is our specialist? I wonder what it costs. I wonder what it costs. Only thing is, watch this. Here's what's unusual. The doctor's got the bill. Hallelujah. The doctor's already paid it. That great physician has already paid it. Understand that he's already paid the cost on the cross of Calvary. So you go to a specialist, you don't even have to pay. The cost of the specialist, listen, second of all, the consideration of the specialist. Why would you go to a specialist to start with? Watch this. Because you can't get relief nowhere else. Amen. Somebody help me now. Josh, you're about to help me back there. You can't get relief nowhere else. Many of y'all know for almost a year and almost two years, I battled this hiatal hernia deal that we didn't know was a hiatal hernia. I've been through all kinds of tests and, and, and he could not find it. And so finally got to the place, I said, somebody's going to find something. And I went down and had the lights, you know, and all that stuff. And I, you know me, I'm not all in for that, amen? And anybody says they enjoy that, it's a nut. But anyway, I went, why did I go have that done? Because this, uh, I considered that if nobody else can help, there's got to be somebody that specializes in this. And then they found out what it was. Why? Because, understand, we got to consider a specialist because we cannot help ourselves. Amen? 
Watch this. The concentration of a specialist, what I mean by that, a specialist would be the best in his field. The best in his field. Are y'all with me? Who you think's the best in the field tonight in dealing with publicans and sinners? Who you think's the best in the field tonight dealing with people's laws that need? Who you think's the best in the field tonight dealing with people that need a change in their lives? I got this last one. I kind of like this. Watch this now. Watch this now. The clinic of the specialist. If you go into a specialist, they're going to have their own special office. Here, I call that one church. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I almost titled the message this. Are y'all ready? I almost titled the message this. The doctor is in. By the way, he not only works in church, but he makes house calls. Amen. Oh, yes. What do you mean, preacher? I'm telling you, uh, there is a place you can go. Honey, when you get sick, you don't stay home from the doctor, stay home from the hospital. If you get bad enough, you got to go. Well, guess what? That's why you come to church. Because even though you're saved, or whether you're not saved, you know you can't stay out of the clinic. You got to come get some help. You got to come get what you need. <coughs> Amen. You know what we call that when you got to come get what you need? We call that a follow-up visit. That's pretty good, ain't it, Brother Brian? Now, I didn't get that from nobody. I mean, that's pretty good, ain't it? A follow-up visit. Do you understand that? You got to go. You can't just go one time. I'm hurting in my chest today while I'm preaching. It's not because of heart attack. It's all good. But I forgot to take my pills this morning. And Wendy didn't help me remember it. And all the dog wanted was food. Amen. But I'm hurting my chest. A couple got to take them pills. Acid, you know, all that good stuff. That hernia, forgot to take them. And if I keep doing that, which I don't do it often, but if I did, I'd have to go back for a follow-up. I do not like statin drugs. I hate them. I hate them. My family is notorious for cholesterol problems. High cholesterol. My mama, everybody, because she only lived to 96. But high cholesterol, right? I went to see a cardiologist when I was hurting my chest where they found out it was a hiatal hernia. And he said, I noticed it one time. <laughs> and this dude, he was a little bit, I mean, he, was, he, didn't, he, he wasn't a happy fellow at times. He said, I noticed one time your cholesterol was low. I said, yeah, they had me on statin drugs. And he said, why is your cholesterol 300 now? And I said, because I threw them in the trash. He looked at me and he said, do you want to live? I said, not like that. He said, who took you off of him? I said, <laughs> said, preacher, you going to die of a heart attack? Probably. But I ain't sure I'll be dying taking a statin drug. I may start back on tomorrow. I don't know. Break him in half or something. What are you saying, preacher? Got to go for a follow-up. He said, well, this is how we need to do a follow-up. I got to think about this. When I came to Jesus, he said, you're pretty bad shape. He said, now, I'm going to save you, but you need to do a follow-up. I'll see you tonight. <laughs> Can I get some help? Got saved on Sunday morning. He said, I'll see you tonight. I'll see you tonight. Hey, Amen. Why? Got somebody help me. I got to go for a follow-up. Y'all going to like something else I started doing. I started sitting there thinking, and when I think it's dangerous, and I started sitting there thinking about different doctors and how it relates to us, and I wrote some of them down, and this is kind of what Jesus is like for us. Are y'all ready? This is Hazel Theology now. He's like a cardiologist. He can fix the heart. Isn't that good? Somebody say that's good. He's like, cardiologist, he can fix your heart. Friend, if your heart ain't right today, Jesus can fix your heart. Are you ready? He's like a chiropractor. He can straighten you out. I mean, that's good for me, right? He's like a chiropractor. He can straighten you out. Binge and get you right. Some of us need straightening out. Right? He's like a podiatrist. He can help you walk right. 
Amen? And I got one more that I always need. He's like a psychiatrist. He can settle your mind. Amen. I'm glad I have a great physician. Boy, he settled my mind, straightened me out, fixed my heart. He changed my life, helped me know which way to walk. And he did all of that at his cost and not mine. The songwriter would say it like this, Brother Brian. He did it all for me. He did it all. And when the Savior died, when the Savior died, what's the words? When the Savior died, bowed his head and cried. Yes, ma'am, he did it all for me. What do you need, Jesus? Some of you need the doctor. You say, oh, preacher, he he saved me. Well, I'm glad. That's the greatest healing. But you need some follow-ups. I don't know about you, but this world you live in, man, right? A buddy sitting here in the front row that got saved had a scare in his health this last week, real bad scare. You want to know why you need to quit doing something? I mean, he'll be happy to talk to you, but a real bad scare. But I want you to listen to me. When he got that way, he didn't go down to Jiffy Lube. He, 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 didn't, he didn't run down to Olive Garden. He went to a physician. And by the way, when you can't get your breath, a good place to go to is a physician. I can preach on the heart sometime what it does. Breath you get from the heart. Amen. If it don't beat, you won't breathe. But if you've been saved by the grace of God, that's the greatest visit you ever made. But today I'm telling you, sometimes we need a checkup. That's what church ought to be. We ought to sit in that seat, take the word of God, and get a checkup. And see where we are and where we need to be. Amen. Brother Crabtree and I, we've been buddies a long time, and we both have a lot in common. Brother Dermot don't feel real good a lot of times, but he won't tell nobody because he don't want to go to doctors. And, you know, praise God, they go tell me the same thing every time, you know. And Miss Norma's on his case just like my wife's on my case, but he don't want to go, which makes me and him both um, not smart because there's times you need to go. There are times you need to go. And I heard a witness from Miss Norma Jean. This world is sick. Miss Emma, if you think about it, I saw the other day, I was just sitting watching someone on YouTube, they're talking about all of the children that are, um, that are kidnapped or put into all kind of mess overseas, sold into different types of slavery, you know what I'm talking about? In this country, sick. Brother Greg, people that would molest a little child, that's a sickness. Two men holding hands walking down the road that ain't brothers from the same mama. That's sick to me. I'm sorry. You can tag me if you want to. I'm never going to prove that mess. Because God doesn't prove it. Amen. That's right. He don't. Amen. Amen. I'm walking, never mind, I ain't even going to tell you, but walking to Disney one time, saw something back, make, back, gag a maggot on a gut wagon. Sickness. It's all in our world. And you and I live in sickness all the time. God hadn't saved us out of it. God hadn't changed our life. We live in it. But I'm glad there's a great physician, Miss Brenda. Amen. Amen. What's your temperature? Some, what's your temperature? Hmm? Preacher, I hadn't been feeling well lately, and I ain't talking about physically. You know, most time when I don't feel well, a lot of times it's, it's probably my fault. Not all the time. Sometimes y'all give it to me, but I mean, most of the time it's my fault, right? Hey, preacher, you have got 400 degree temperature. So take me. We don't do that. But don't you listen. Sometimes I bring sickness on myself, right? 
you remember you was a kid and your mom would say, put a coat on if you're going out there. It's cold, you're going to get sick. Remember that? Sometimes preachers want to say to some of us, hey, you open up the door for sickness. You better quit that. Sin's like cancer. It'll start somewhere small, but it won't stay that way. Miss Amelia, we saw that in what, the last few weeks. It can start, but it don't stay that way. Get us praying. How many of you glad you had a heart? You know, they told me they heart transplants. I had a heart transplant. Amen. Amen. Brother Douglas, I've had more surgery tomorrow, but he'll still have the same heart. But praise God, when I got saved, I got a heart transplant. Amen. Amen. Have you been saved? If you did, you've already been to a great physician. But let me ask you this. One, <laughs> my daddy used to say to myself, son, you need a checkup from the neck up. <laughs> my daddy really had a loving spirit about him, amen? <laughs> I didn't know what my name was for a while. I could tell you what he called me, but I won't. <laughs> but let me ask you a question. Are you spiritually sick at all today? Or some of you are. Some of you are. You know what spiritual sickness is? is when you begin feeling bad about the way you are living, but you don't go to the physician and get it fixed. Then it gets worse. Amen. Amen. Let's stand our feet. Thank you for listening. We've had a busy day. It's been a good day. Why don't you bow your heads with me just a moment. Miss Heather is going to come play for us on the piano here softly just a moment. Brother Brown, I'll let you know if we're going farther than that, but we'll play softly in just a moment. Every head bowed all across this place. How many of you remember the day you got saved and Jesus gave you a heart transplant? Lift your hand up real high. You remember that day. You can put it down. Boy, isn't that a good testimony of God's grace? Amen. That made me want to shout right now. Ain't nothing like being saved and knowing you're saved. I wonder if anybody in this auditorium today say, Preacher, spiritually I've been running a little bit of a fever. Preacher, spiritually I, I have, I've been a little under the weather spiritually. And I don't want to be that way. I want to be what God wants me to be. And I need the great physician to touch me this morning. I wonder if those Christians that are like that, be honest this morning. Just shake your hand up and say, Preacher, there's times I really need that. Would you pray for me? And I'm seeing some hands across the church. Don't be ashamed to raise them. Don't be ashamed to raise them. I want a day why every head bowed and every eye closed. I want if you're here today and you say, Preacher, I don't know that I'm saved. If I die today, I don't know 100% sure I'd go to heaven. But I don't want to go to hell and I need Christ. I need to be saved. I need that heart transplant. I need Jesus to change my life. I wonder if today if that would be you. Would you slip your hand up and let me pray for you? You can put it right back down. But I don't know I'm saved, preacher. I'm not 100% sure of that. Would you pray for me, preacher? Would you pray for me? I'm going to give you just a moment. I've been watching God deal with a lot of hearts today. You know sickness, man. You know sickness. I wonder why Miss Heather's playing. Some have made their way down the altar, but I don't know. Sometimes I feel like we think, well, I'll just get this settled some other time. But what about this morning at the clinic? If you're here today and you say, Preacher, I want to be well spiritually. I need God to touch me as a child of God. Maybe you know someone that's gotten away from the Lord and they're getting out. They're going to catch something. Are y'all listening? They're going to catch something. Gotten away from the Lord. I wonder if today, if you may want to slip out and pray for them right now across this auditorium. Maybe a child of God wants to slip out right now and say, Lord, help me to be where I need to be. These altars are open, friend. If you've heard the truth today, and I do something with it. If you've heard the truth today, and I do something with it. Will you do something with it? Preacher, I don't do the altar thing. You better start doing the altar thing.
You better listen to this pastor, I'm telling you. You'll never be at the place in your life that you don't need to bow down before the Son of God. Sickness spreads, man. Lord, I just thought of something else I want to share with you, but sickness spreads. know the great position today. And I'll tell you the truth. Miss Wendy, there have been a few times that physicians had to make house calls. Oh, yes. Brother Barry Jr., you still back there? All right, Casey, you back there, right? Would you say that I'm telling this right? Y'all have battled a lot in the last six months at least of sickness to your family, right? Just general sickness. Would you say this statement is correct, Miss Casey? When one gets it, it spreads through the family. Is that correct? Yeah. Right? You know one of them comes home from school with a bad runny nose. Lord, mama's got to take care of them. You'll probably end up getting it, right? I want everybody to listen to me. Mr. Heather, don't you stop playing and thank you for the good invitation music. I'm going to leave you with this. Don't get sick because others around you get sick. You better listen to me. Don't get sick because others around you get sick. It'll catch. It'll catch. Amen. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your day. I've enjoyed it. I'm enjoying. I can't wait to get back because I don't know if I can get going, but I can't wait to get back. We will probably, Brother Brian, grab some lunch anyway before we get to doing that. You gonna take me out, Brother Brian? Said sure. I got a church card. <laughs> All right. Um, here's what we're gonna do. Some of you, I, I put your Bibles over there. I hope you got them. Some of you's electric blankets. I hope you got those. Um, I do want to mention to you, we have one section of church, a lot of children. We try to get the parents to sit with the children there. If you could work with those parents when a lot of babies are here, and you can kind of keep that space a little bit available, we'll try to work with you on that up there. Because we've got so many children in Calvary. One week we had 21 infants. So, so many children in Calvary that we try to work with that. But I want to mention a couple things to you real quick, all right, that, that are important. Um, don't leave anything in here that you value. Okay, try to take it with you because you're not going to have it because this is all going to go into full construction, all right? Now, here's what we're going to do, and we're going to do it safely. We're not going to kill people with the chairs. We are not Hulk Hogan. By the way, did y'all hear he got saved? Did y'all know that? The guy used to call Hulk back when I was a kid. Remember Rassam years ago got saved? I mean, I'm talking about saved and that don't make any bones about it. Amen. You also pray for the quarterback. I know they got put out of the playoffs, but the quarterback of the Tennessee Titans, C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud is a tremendously devoted young Christian man that made the comment on national television that my purpose here is not to be the quarterback. My purpose here is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. He made that comment. Must have been raised by a good mama. Dude. Somebody ran it. But uh, he's a good quarterback too. But I say that stuff because it's important. But anyway, take what you can. Do not hit anybody with a chair. If you're not physically able to lift a chair, then do not lift it. I'd rather visit you here than we have to send one of the preachers over to the hospital, all right? So do not do that, all right? Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the chairs under the direct of Brother Brian and Brother Ferry, okay? We're going to take the chairs. You're not going to put them up in there. You're just going to set them in the building. we got to do all that ourselves. Before we do that, I need about six of you, seven of you guys that can move something that's not real heavy but can help. Lift your hand up if you can help me just a minute. All right, I see. All right, all you guys that just raised your hand, I want you to leave. Thank you for being a part of Calvary. I want you to leave. Now, here's what I want you to do. Brother Brian, will you show them what's got to go down the hall 
and we've got to put somewhere else. Anybody else want to help us? It'll probably take you 10 minutes. All right? It'll probably take you 10 minutes. We just got to get some stuff out of the way because we we're going to make this as nice as we can. All right? That ought to be, that, that should be plenty. Thank you. Brother Corey, you come on. The ones that's walking, y'all come on. Um, Brother Corey, those big, tall uh, things we use to block stuff, y'all going to have to lean those to kind of get them through them doors, and we'll get those out of the way. Thank you guys for helping. All right, here's the deal. Get your chair. All you fellas that are leaving, come back and get a chair when you get back. Song books, set them over there. Thank you, Brother Johnny. On that, set them over there at the same room. Brother Brady will take your song book. God bless you, visitors. Thank you for being with us. Grab a chair and get out of here. <laughs> Amen. You're free to go.